From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Tuesday, May 17th, 2022. Costa Rican ransomware rhetoric somehow gets uglier. The Conti Ransomware Group posted messages on their leak site, notifying the Costa Rican government it raised its ransom demands to $20 million worth of cryptocurrency and threatening to overthrow the government of newly elected President Rodrigo Chavez. Conti already leaked 97% of 670 gigabytes of data stolen from the government agencies, leading the government to declare a state of emergency. Conti's ransomware attacks have had significant impacts on digital services from the government, leading the finance ministry to tell citizens to calculate taxes by hand and pay them at local banks rather than through an online portal. DOJ files its first criminal cryptocurrency sanctions case. Late last week, a federal judge disclosed that the U.S. Justice Department launched a case against an American citizen accused of transmitting over $10 million in Bitcoin to a virtual exchange located in a sanctioned country. We don't know which one specifically, but it's either Cuba, Iran, North Korea, Syria, or Russia. In a nine-page opinion about accepting the case, U.S. Magistrate Judge Zia M. Faruqi called cryptocurrency's claim of anonymity a myth, saying the DOJ can and will criminally prosecute individuals and entities for failure to comply with OFAC's regulations, including as to virtual currency. The defendant was not named, and the case remained sealed. Trying to Fix Open Source Supply Chain Security After a meeting with officials in the Biden administration, the Linux Foundation and Open Source Security Foundation announced plans to invest over $150 million over the next two years to make the open source software supply chain more secure. This comes as part of an overall 10-point plan to boost open source security. A group of tech companies, including Amazon, Ericsson, Google, Intel, Microsoft, and VMware, already pledged $30 million in initial funding. As part of this, Google Cloud said that it will launch an open-source maintenance crew, a dedicated team of engineers who will work directly with upstream open-source maintainers. Twitter CEO outlines the platform's spam calculations. Twitter CEO Parag Agrawal published a Twitter thread explaining why the company has confidence in its estimate that less than 5% of its users were spam accounts. This comes after a Reuters report expressed skepticism of this number, leading Elon Musk to say his acquisition of the company was on hold. Agrawal said this estimate relies on private data like IP addresses, account activity, and browser signatures to help sort accounts that might superficially appear to be spam. He further said the estimate is based on multiple human reviews of thousands of accounts sampled at random over time from its monetizable daily active users every quarter. The thread further stated Twitter suspends over 500,000 spam accounts daily, usually before they're ever seen by any other users. And now, let's thank today's sponsor, Torque. Myth number two, security automation is just a new term for automated security testing. Wrong. While scanning and testing may be one example of a security automation use case, it's hardly the only one. Automation can be used to do things like help manage complex security workflows and optimize collaboration between different stakeholders. These are tasks that were not traditionally automated. To learn more about the realities of automation, head to torque.io. Big Tech asks SCOTUS to stop Texas content moderation law. The tech industry trade groups NetChoice and the Computer Communications Industry Association appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court for an emergency stay on Texas Law HB 20, which created liability for large platforms that moderate content based on the viewpoint of the user or another person. This request will be reviewed by Justice Samuel Alito, who could either unilaterally decide on the stay or refer it to the entire court. The law became effective last week after a three-judge federal appeals court panel overturned a previous injunction. The trade group successfully won an injunction on a similar Florida law on First Amendment grounds. NSA chief says no backdoors in quantum encryption standards. The National Institute of Standards and Technology has been developing quantum-resistant encryption standards for a while now. In an interview, NSA Director of Cybersecurity Rob Joyce said there are no backdoors being designed into these new standards that could let spies bypass encryption. He did say the NSA is working with NIST to test the various quantum encryption standards still under development in order to harden them for the overall industry. CISA warns about installing a Windows update. Late last year, CISA established its Known Exploited Vulnerability Catalog, a list of known software exploits that federal civilian executive branch agencies are required to patch within three weeks of being added. However, the agency recently removed the May 2022 Patch Tuesday update from the list due to an Active Directory authentication issue. 
The issue is that Windows Update patched an actively exploited Windows LSA spoofing zero-day that could force domain controllers to authenticate an attacker remotely. For those that have already installed the update, Microsoft recommends manually mapping certificates to a machine account in Active Directory. And now your Should Have Patched Tuesday update. Now that we're done talking about updates CISA does not want you to install, let's run down some that you should patch. SonicWall released multiple patches for vulnerabilities in its secure mobile access appliances, with one high-severity vulnerability open to unauthorized access. Apple released an emergency security update to address a zero-day impacting Macs and Apple Watch devices involving an out-of-bounds write issue in the Apple AVD to execute arbitrary code. Apple says this may have been actively exploited. Thanks for listening to today's cybersecurity headlines. We've got a special announcement. CISO Series is bringing Super Cyber Friday to San Francisco for a live in-person show on June 6, 2022. It'll be our Monday edition. Join us in person or virtually. Just go to the Super Cyber Friday section of our site and register to be in person or join us virtually. And if you're looking to expand your cybersecurity podcast subscriptions, a great companion to this show is the CISO Series podcast. This week, we posted an episode entitled A Look Back at Foolish Security Policies of Past and Present that digs into the bevy of outdated security policies that are still alive and well in today's world. These can include things like a clean desk policy, password rotation, and preventing pasting into a password field. Just head on over to CISOseries.com to listen or subscribe in your podcast app of choice. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines. 